so the cone's on now so we're going to run the cone with the this fueling system and we'll see if um, it seems okay otherwise I think there'll be some sort of um, petrol issue there I just can't quite work it out cones on let's see if it seems better with that fueling system we've had it with the cone on and that fueling system and it was okay ish maybe so um, really lovely meeting Jim there uh, with the Frago um, when you meet people at the garage you can tell what they're going to be like in regards to the garage I'm sure we'll see him um, at least a couple more times uh, he's one of them guys very very modest he obviously knows what he's talking about um, he's obviously more mechanically minded than he would admit he is which is you know which is which is great um, he's very modest uh, so I think we'll see him again. I always get a little bit unsure as to how much I should put people on camera. I just I just don't know the kind of social etiquette of that part. Um, but as people get more comfortable down here in the garage with me, they end up doing things naturally. So they may fall on camera naturally and they may um, pick up the camera and do some filming. Uh, Gary is a, a good example of that. Gary used to say, no, no, don't get me on camera. And then he naturally started falling on camera and it became more normal. So really nice meeting Jimmy. Um, I test rode this with my AirPod carb on. It ran beautifully to the point where I'd be tempted to keep this set up. Really tempted to keep this set up. It's quick guys, really quick. Um, that means this carb really was junk. I'm going to kind of take it apart now and just see what's going on. Uh, with the AirPod on and its own fuel, by the way, guys, and its own fuel, very quick, um, and you can hear it sucking in the um, the air, and also the AirPod is under the seat, so you'd get away with keeping that on. So I think this is a good running bike. I don't think the engine needs breaking down. Uh, I think. Both carbs are junk. So I'm going to take this apart and see if there's anything obvious. Give it a good clean out. And then next week go back to this and try it again. Uh, and we'll see from there where we go. Uh, it's been a very, very busy weekend. It's had its highs and its lows. Yesterday morning I was very disappointed with the Harley. Today it's back to, it's back to normal. Um, I'll be using it like normal, which to be fair isn't much. And I will of course keep people up to date as to how it's cooling or not and um, the Lex Moto was good at the end today it just needed a uh, fuel tank flush but I'm gonna keep an eye on it over the next couple of weeks I'm gonna put it all back together next week and fire it up again get it out on the road see how it is and keep kind of plugging away at it so I'm not gonna rush it through an MOT I want to make sure it's reliable uh that's great news this this remember this has an mot and everything so if i can get this carb working and cleaned or it's just running well with that carb i'll charge the battery at home then that's good to go it it's it's a good running bike which is great news so overall it's been positive this weekend at the garage uh thank you all for watching i don't know what video this is maybe thursday uh, maybe tuesday maybe wednesday um as always thank you all for watching it's your guys um thoughts feelings and opinions that help me out here i would be screwed so much of the time without you someone said try another carb someone said try fuel uh and i was ready to dive deep into this engine uh so uh without you guys this channel wouldn't function so i've broken this carb down fully to do it absolute fully um clean um, air fuel screw was two out just for my reference two out uh, it was in a state guys it is in a state it's dirty it's been hacked it's it's rough um, all of the jets look like they've been chewed out with someone's teeth uh, I don't know if they're the right size some of them are bent it's all a bit iffy at this stage and um, the reason I've taken the diaphragm off over here the diaphragm goes nowhere near the carb cleaner because it, it shrinks it. So when you're cleaning all this out um, with carb cleaner, 
you want it all clear you don't want any to fall on that rubber diaphragm because it ruins it so you get it like this and you spray it all the way through just clean everything out and then you look at the jetting what main jets in here this is not a bog standard car that has been messed with uh, I believe it should be 80 ish 82 82 um, so that is a standard jet but even if you look into all the jets I don't know if I can show you an example if you look in it come on zoom 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 come on focus right let me try and get that focused there you go it's just hacked and it almost looks like it's been drilled and that is a 35 so it's just not a happy carb I'm gonna give it a thorough clean and then we're gonna go back to putting that on next week and seeing if we've got it uh, good to go the um, air the idle adjustment is uh, seized solid absolutely doesn't move got to get some WD on that and try and loosen it up because you can't adjust the idle uh, now this is a free carb now they gave me the money back but but they sent this out to me as a fully working carb coming came off a fully working bike no it wasn't it wasn't um, and it's just unfair for people out there who might not go through the hassle of claiming their money back that's all they might feel like rubbish uh, and as you've seen with this it makes you then challenge other things like is the engine junk because you think you've got a fully working carb I'm going to give this a good clean and then technically I'm going to leave it on the shelf uh, I'm not going to push my luck this weekend this is going to go back on the bike next weekend to see if it resolves the kind of final piece of the puzzle really because that ran wicked with that carb and high flow air um, filter the other thing that I haven't taken into account, which I don't think is true, is if the air box happened to be a 50cc one, um, if someone put it on by mistake, but no, it, it's not. It looks original, but it's, all this stuff is worth considering. So if this carb doesn't run too well next week with the air box on, for example, maybe I'll pop the air box off and give it another shot. Quick clean through and we'll see how we go from there. So another reason this off the shelf working carb is junk is because the idle screw was seized and now it's snapped. Um, hopefully the idle's okay. I've cleaned this one now. If I find it's hugely bad, I may have to switch all of this back over to the original carb. But there's bits in here that aren't right as well. The um, yeah i don't think i'd be able to make one possibly uh the aim is for this one stick with this one for now uh there's no easy way of fixing that guys that's the truth you can't even really drill it out um it's a pain in the ass to drill through bolts so i'm going to keep putting it back together in hope that it is good so i've noticed one other thing about this carb which makes it a dud lids on Seated. Look at this gap. This corner's been bent. Um, it's the only corner doing that. So, uh, it's not good. Basically, if you get air going through there, it ruins the whole vacuum system. This carb could be done. I might need to switch. It's bloody annoying. I'm going to try and tap that out a touch. Um, because technically the seal is... You know, technically it's in here, but if air's getting in, it's going to ruin it. So, uh, I'm going to try and tap it out a touch and see if I get lucky. Um, at the moment, it's not looking great. So, the top, when trying to bend it back, cracked it. Put a crack in it. Um, that carb really was junk. I'm going to take the pieces off and keep them. Uh, but otherwise it's going to go in the bin um, can you see the crack up there all the way through I could probably, I could probably snap that if I wanted but there's no point um, so I've spent ages transferring everything again to the other carb so now it's all fresh and cleaned anyway and adjusted with a new diaphragm because I've swapped them all over technically technically this carb next week should go back on the bike and should sort it out but we don't know yet okay everyone so it's actually the next day for me now yesterday which was Sunday the 15th um, 
I try and do kind of nine till three roughly at the garage on the weekends. I try and leave a few hours for me. Um, but yesterday I did 8.30 until 5. Um, Jimmy turned up for an hour or two and in the middle as well, which was no problem at all. But I just pushed my luck once I started rebuilding the carb at kind of half three, four. Um, I then spent a long time, about an hour, rebuilding the old carb to then find that at the top it had been bent at some point. Um, so the top housing would never have sealed properly. Um, and I was thinking about silicones and this and that, which probably would have worked, but I didn't want to mess with that. So very last minute, I transferred all the good parts of that carb to this carb. The example, the squirt advance there, that was one thing that this carb wasn't working. The whole bowl squirt advance assembly is from the other one. The actual um, diaphragm needle, everything's from the other one, etc. So uh, I basically built that and had just run out of energy. It was five o'clock. I'd spent no time to myself, it became an issue. Um, anyway, long story short, it's Monday now, I've been to work today, but I just couldn't help. I really, really need to throw it on and test it. Um, I've charged the battery at home, so that's good, that's on charge. With that carb and that setup, with the cone, guys, it runs great, it's fast, it's, it's idling great. Um, but at this stage, I haven't messed with the um, choke, and I haven't run a throttle cable that will work for that carb. If I find that this is junk and I need to run this carb, I will be ordering a Lexmoto FMX cable, for example, and running that all the way back. So we've got the appropriate throttle cable for the bike and um, running it with the cone. I mean, honestly, it sounded great. It ran well, it had a good top end. It was quicker than a normal fly. So it did all the things that you wanted it to do. Uh, but for me, originality is king. I just I want it to run on its original carb, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm going to pop that off. I'm going to throw this on. I'm not even going to put the throw cable on or anything at this stage. Throw it on, put some fuel through, and see how it sounds. If it sounds okay, I'm going to get it out there, up and down the road, and we'll see if we get some sort of decent response. Um, both carbs were really bad, actually. Um, my hope is that I've built something in between. I've built a good carb with lots of bad parts. That's my hope overall. So let's pop this off. Let's pop that on and see kind of what we're looking at. I'll, I'll want to leave it like this and run it, but I might just be quicker throwing that all back on and then um, being able to test it. Uh, there is a chance that it goes back to exactly how it was, which was kind of no top end it could go back to that um, or it could all be solved because we've swapped enough parts over it could be good okay so Piaggio Frankenstein carb half and half um, all kind of set up full cables on uh, I've sucked some fuel through so it should start easily enough batteries charged let it idle for a couple of minutes let the choke come off maybe set the idle if needed and then see how it runs. That's if it starts at all. So I do genuinely want to give it a couple of minutes. It does sound quite soft to me sounds quite soft. Um, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to warm up, let the choke go off and then um, give it a quick spin. I mean it's not idling like the other carb, the other carb's pretty uh, pretty beefy but um, these were known for being smooth bikes. I'll know, I'll know by the feel if it's right or not once I'm out there.
Yes. Yes. Good boy. Yeah. We're back. Absolutely back, guys. Full normal running condition there. Um, brilliant. Pulled away exactly as it should. Uh, oh, man. Oh, that's so bloody lucky. Um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Right. I'm going to start piecing it back together gently, but I need to get back down to the engine. I need the shroud for the air fan. I need to put two more bolts into the front head. Eventually, I'm going to want to check and top up the oil. Um, so I'm really gently going to start piecing it back together. Honestly, that ran beautifully. So it needs to be a bike now. I wanted to get some high temp paint. I might even go today or tomorrow and get some. Uh, I'll just put some paper behind it and spray it on the bike just for that exhaust. But this bike, that's it, it's done. Oh, thank God. I mean, that was a right, it seems kind of dramatic, but you know, two weeks of a bike that started really quickly and then something just wasn't right really winds you up and then you try three carbs and it still don't work and then you look at the two carbs carefully and they're both junk and then you somehow have to build one honestly i know these bikes inside out that's riding beautifully um so uh i'm gonna get it finished off i'm very very pleased so uh tomorrow's video i wipe down some back to black some black paint for the exhaust and it's good to go. It's all up and working and riding. All the lights are working. Top up the um, oil if needed tomorrow. It's got a GSMOT. 850 to 1,000 pound all day long. Nice.